It's the war-ridden Middle Eastern Iraq, and the United States Marines are in battle with the region's terror groups. After taking down several targets, John witnesses the death of his buddy, and soon he is attacked by a couple of terrorists. John had his hand pierced when one of them knifed him, and the memories still haunt him to this day. Back to the present day, John accidentally pushes a man against a wall out of reflex, and later apologizes as he takes off onto the streets. Even after seeing the worst of humankind, he always tries to do good. That night, he encounters a couple of thugs harassing a drunk bum, and the thugs pour gasoline on the poor man in order to burn him alive. John doesn't hesitate to interfere and fights the harassers. The thugs take arms with broken glass and a crowbar, but John is a decorated Marine. He takes them on easily, and surprisingly, the police don't take long to show up. Unfortunately, they apprehend John while the thugs run away. While putting cuffs on John, the officers learn that he's a decorated veteran, so they let him go to avoid backlash from the press and social media. Later that same night, a spaceship is speeding out of control towards Earth, and a guardian from planet Oa is manning the ship. In the outbound suburbs of the city, a taxi pulls in the driveway of an old run-down house. John gets off the taxi with heavy grocery bags and goes up to the front door. Just then, to his great astonishment, he sees a huge fireball falling from the sky and landing with a huge blast in his neighborhood. Without thinking twice, John jumps over the fence and runs toward the crash site and tries to help the blue alien trapped in the wreckage. He sees the door of the spaceship and pulls it open to reach inside. He sees a weird blue alien who is the guardian of the ship and takes him outside. However, the guardian dies before him after telling John he was looking for him. The Guardian burns spontaneously and disintegrates into thin air. From the remains, a green glowing ring starts floating and speaks to John, saying he was selected to be part of the Green Lantern Corps and places itself on John's finger. Unable to take it off or even know how it works, John gets in trouble after creating a giant hammer accidentally. John asks for someone to help him, and the ring takes him flying to the Justice League Watchtower. The watchtower lets him in because it recognizes him as a Green Lantern, and John walks through the gates not knowing where to go. The three Justice League members are having an intense discussion inside the tower, and they are surprised to see a stranger walk in undetected. However, Vixen, Green Arrow, and Martian Manhunter treat him as an intruder. After a short fight where John Stewart shows his inexperience with Lantern's power, the members are able to subdue him and the League interrogates John on how he obtained that ring. The ring reveals its previous owner as Hal Jordan, and the League doesn't believe he is dead, especially the Green Arrow who is very close with Hal, and they decide to investigate the matter on their own. Anyway, the only thing which concerns John Stewart is getting this damn ring off his hand. John takes the Green Arrow in his power shield and somehow is able to land safely. Then the duo goes to check the Guardian's shipwreck, which has been repaired during John's absence, and they are quite surprised. Green Arrow places his hand on the main deck and the whole ship activates. Must be nice to be with the Justice League, right? With the help of John's ring, they activate the ship and fly toward Oa's coordinates as soon as John says fly. They shoot into deep space in the speed of light, and during the trip, John learns the history of the Green Lantern Corps and the Green Arrow just falls asleep out of boredom. He wakes up suddenly as they arrive at Planet Oa, home of Lantern Corps and the Guardians. Arrow instructs John not to do anything stupid as they prepare to land, and upon arrival, they find the corpses of Green Lanterns and Guardians. The damage is just too much, and the duo skips through the dead bodies, and it seems like the planet is left only with its shadows after the chaos. John sees the Citadel standing in the middle of the ruins and suggests they go and investigate. Inside the destroyed Hall of Honor, walking through the carnage, they witness the statues of the Green Lanterns, and Hal Jordan stands tall above everyone else, as he is recognized as the greatest lantern in the universe. Oliver finds a power battery and hands it over to John, as he might need a battery to recharge his ring. John discovers that he can remove his ring, and without any hesitation, he takes it off. And just then, out of nowhere, a winged woman attacks them, and John tries defending himself with no ring. Fortunately, he is able to get hold of the ring back, and this time, he goes on the offense. Green Arrow joins in the battle as well, but John crushes the woman with a hummer, 
and he even gets flashbacks from his time in the battlefield. Somehow, John stops the attack, and the woman gets to breathe again. After she recomposes, Shayera Hall of Thanagar, warrior of the First Order questions if they belong to Ran's forces, she gives out evidence to prove the Ran forces are the culprits who have destroyed Oa and destroys the main board in rage, much to the surprise of both John and Oliver. Shayera continues to explain that her home planet, Thanagar, is at war with Ran. Both planets attempted a truce and joined forces to build a Zeta beam to boost the economy and technology of both worlds. However, the experiment turned out to be a disaster that teleported Thanagar to Ran's sector, destroying both ecosystems. Hal Jordan was present during the accident, and he was teleported along with Thanagar dying in the process. The war between both planets raged on ever since. John and Oliver decide to get the Ranians' help to investigate the accident and ask Shayera to go with them, and she agrees not to start any fights. During the trip, John gets familiar with the ring's abilities by going through a manual, and even Oliver jokes about it. But soon, the ring runs out of power. Oliver hands him the power battery and teaches him the oath to recharge it. John is pleasantly surprised at the power of the Lantern Corps as the ring charges immediately. They arrive at a Ranian outpost, but only find corpses of Ranian and Thanagarian soldiers. Suddenly, a Zeta Beam appears, and the group evades it by flying away. Lantern has to carry Oliver away, and just then, the beam teleports a Ranian man near them. Seeing what will unfold before them, Oliver tries to calm them, but Shayera doesn't hesitate to attack him. The fight goes back and forth, and John and Oliver have to intervene and stop them. The man introduces himself as Adam Strange, the champion of Ran presumed dead. Upon learning that the Green Lantern Corps is gone, Strange decides to help them get to the bottom of this, since Ran had an alliance with Oa and they couldn't be responsible for its destruction. John suggests Strange join the group and take them to his high command. When they get near Ran, they see the conflict is still active, and they find dead soldiers all around them floating in space. They contact a Ranian captain that recognizes Strange and gives him information about the war. Sardath, a Ranian scientist who worked on the incident that teleported Thanagar, is building a weapon that will destroy Thanagar and end this once and for all. Lantern commands the ring to save the Ranian ship, but soon as the captain is saved, he thanks them and returns to battle to go on a suicide mission, killing himself and Thanagarians in the process. After a while, to the great surprise of both John and Oliver, Shayera and Adam are working together, and they discover it's the same Ronian ship that attacked Oa, also attacked Ron, but in the guise of a Thanagarian ship, suggesting that someone else is fueling the conflict between both planets, and they have attacked other places as well in the past. They trace the ship to a hidden base as they scan the floating asteroids and get attacked by defending cruise missiles from a hidden spaceship. They do their best to evade the missiles and land on an aircraft hangar hidden deep inside a fortified asteroid. The team gets off the ship and walks inside the hangar and just then, a group of aliens powered with yellow lantern energy attacks them. One time, John's mind is controlled by one of them, and he snaps out just in time to attack the villain. And soon, John has him pinned down. But John does not kill him. Alas, that gives the chance for Sinestro, the leader of Yellow Lantern, to attack John and the crew who discovers he is the real perpetrator of the Ranthanagar War, who then captures the heroes. John and his crew wake up in a prison cell, and John decides to test the yellow energy barriers, which shoots him back. Sinestro appears and warns them against escape. They get a pleasant surprise when Hal Jordan, the greatest Green Lantern, appears from a dark corner of the cell, and Oliver jumps on him out of joy. Hal meets John going face to face, they take good measures of each other, and Hal is updated on the latest situation. When the group asks how Hal escaped death, he explains that Sinestro was responsible for the accident with the Zeta Beam, as he had infiltrated the science base, and that somehow, Hal survived the beam's energy by crashing on a nearby planet. And just before going unconscious and getting trapped by Sinestro, Hal commanded his ring to find a successor. Hal seems surprised to learn about Oa's destruction, and the group tells him about Sardath and his world-killer weapon Doomsday. However, secretly without them knowing, Sinestro was listening and decided to find this weapon as well. With the help of Shayera's metal knife, 
Hal digs through the rocks and deactivates the force field to escape their prison. They run through the base and hide just in time to stay away from Sinestro and his crew. They get to their ship, where Hal kills one of Sinestro's crew, using Shiera's mace, much to Oliver's shock. Hal explains that months of captivity can do that to a man. Anyway, they get on board their ship, and John claims that they need the ring back. Hal teaches John to will for the ring, and he focuses on it. The ring activates and gets hold of all their weaponry and shoots back to John. Even Sinestro is surprised by its action. They fly into space and try to hyperspeed through but have to slow down due to lack of energy. Upon arrival on Ran, they find Sinestro's forces already attacking the planet. Strange contacts, high command, and grants for a safe passage to enter. Sinestro's forces shoot missiles at them but they are quick enough to enter the high command just before any impact. Adam Strange explains the truth of the attacks to the High Command, and then contacts Sardath to explain about the situation. However, Sardath refuses to accept Thanagar's innocence, determined to use his weapon to put an end to the conflict. Sardath also explains that Adam Strange has a metagene that allowed him to tap into the Zeta Beam energy. Anyway, Sardath agrees to meet face-to-face -face and teleports the group to his location using Zeta Beams. Suddenly, Sinestro finds the crew and attacks them to take control of the Zeta Beam Cannon. The battle is fierce, and the Yellow Lanterns prove too much for the Allied force. During the fight, Hal again mercilessly kills one of Sinestro's men and then runs away from the battle while John duels against Sinestro. The Yellow Lantern takes John's ring, throws it away, and is about to kill John, but Stuart summons his ring, flying swiftly through Sinestro's chest and killing him. Sinestro's last words suggest that his master will kill them all. John follows the death trail armed with a lantern gun, and soon the fellow fighters are able to defeat the Yellow Lanterns and reach the command center to reach Sardath. Hal announces that Sardath was finally convinced not to use the Zeta Beam Cannon. However, Jordan shoots Sardoth and betrays his friends, showing his true nature. On the day of his supposed death, Sinestro infected him with the Parallax entity to turn him into his slave. Together, they attacked planet Oa and killed the Green Lanterns, but Jordan became more powerful after stealing their rings and overpowered Sinestro, becoming his master. How the tables have turned for Sinestro. With all lantern rings combined with the yellow energy, Hal Jordan is the living embodiment of a godlike entity. Hal's goal is to create a new universe with no war and conflict, which he first plans to do by destroying Ran and Thanagar. John fights Hal, but he proves too much to handle as Hal is able to defeat all the Justice fighters with ease and sets off to activate the Zeta Beam, directing it towards Ran and Thanagar. John quickly chases him down and starts to battle him once more. This time John is able to unleash all of his willpower and take the Green Lantern Rings away from Hal, knocking him out. However, Hal stands up again and is about to kill John, but this time Green Arrow is forced to shoot an arrow through his friend's chest, killing Hal and the Parallax Entity for good. Meanwhile, the Zeta Beam was still activated and they couldn't find a way to stop its ignition. Adam Strange decides to sacrifice himself and uses his metagene to divert the Zeta Beam before it could hit Thanagar. In memory of his late wife, he sacrifices himself to save billions of lives. The remaining heroes return to Earth. Shiera bids farewell, and John sends the Green Lantern rings he retrieved from Hal to find new recruits and rebuild the Lantern Corps. John and Oliver go together to toast their lost friends, but also for the new ones. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware of my power, Green Lantern's light. Thank you for watching Second Look. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more awesome videos. Have a nice day.